The Nintendo DS and DS Lite family of handheld systems are pretty awesome on their own, but once you level them up to play backups of over 4,000 games from the Game Boy, Game Boy Color, Game Boy Advance, and NES libraries, they're in a league of their own. Grab your Nintendo DS and your PC. You're about to learn something new. All of the magic that happens here goes through the power of the Easy Flash Omega Definitive Edition Flash Card. These are readily available on Amazon, and I've got one linked for you in the video description so you can pick one up for your own DS or DS Lite system. You'll also need a micro SD card to store your game content. I have one linked for you in the video description that will work great with the Flash Card. Once you have your Easy Flash Omega Definitive Edition in hand, you'll need to visit the Easy Flash website to grab some key downloads. I have it linked for you in the video description. Scroll down on the page and make sure that you have the tab highlighted for Easy Flash Omega Definitive Edition, shown here. Right underneath this tab, you'll see a listing for Kernel and Firmware Download. Click to download the latest version of the Kernel and Firmware file to your computer. The next two steps are optional but recommended, especially if you're going to play Game Boy Advance games on your DS or DS Lite through this process. Scroll down to the bottom of the page and you'll see two listings here. One is to be able to download cheats. Hey, you know me, no judgments. And the other link lets you download thumbnails specifically for Game Boy Advance games. Once you have all of these files downloaded, you'll need to format your micro SD card. Insert your micro SD card into your computer's card reader. If it's 32 gigabytes or less, you can format it in FAT32 format. And if it's greater than 32 gigabytes, you can format it in XFAT format. You can use cards as large as 128 gigabytes with the Easy Flash Omega Definitive Edition, but the entire libraries for all four of the supported systems don't exceed about 16 gigabytes total. Even at 32 gigabytes, you'll have plenty of room for all of the official games and your favorite homebrew content. Now that you've got the micro SD card formatted, open up File Explorer and navigate to the Downloads folder. You'll find three zip files here, and you'll need to extract all three of these zip files. No need to watch paint dry here. Just extract each of the zip files into your downloads folder, deleting each of the zip files along the way once you're done with them. Open the File Explorer window for your micro SD card. One of the easy ways to go about this is just to simply remove the micro SD card and put it right back into your computer. To make things easy to transfer around, I'm going to take the micro SD card File Explorer window and snap it to the right side, and then snap the downloads folder to the left side. Let's tackle these folders one at a time, starting with the images folder. Double click on this folder and you'll find a subfolder inside here. Take that folder and drag and drop it directly on the root of the micro SD card. This process takes about two minutes in real time depending upon the speed of your micro SD card. From here, you can go back one level in the downloads folder back to the root of downloads. Now you can delete the images file out of downloads, remembering of course, it's still archived in your recycle bin. Next up in the downloads folder, navigate to the Omega Cheats folder and double click into it. You'll see a folder in here called Cheats. Grab that folder and drag and drop it directly on the root of the micro SD card. Again, this takes a couple of minutes in real time. Go back to the root of your downloads folder and you can now delete the Omega Cheats folder and send it to your recycle bin. Next up, navigate to the Omega DE folder and double click in. You'll see two PDF files and a file called ECKernel.bin. Grab that .bin file and drag and drop it on the root of the micro SD card. To finish cleaning up your downloads folder, go back one level to the root of downloads, and now you can delete the Omega DE folder and send it to your recycle bin. With all of the prerequisites taken care of, let's get your game files copied over. I have some content pre-staged in a folder called demo on my computer. There are a couple of things I want to point out about the way that this content is configured. I have folders here labeled Game Boy, Game Boy Advance, Game Boy Color, and NES. You can name your folders anything that you like that works for you. Take a look inside one of these folders, and what you'll find is I have subfolders representing numbers and each of the letters of the alphabet. You can store up to 512 ROMs in any given folder, and the Easy Flash Omega Definitive Edition will be able to read them. However, you probably won't want to sort through 512 games every time you want to find one individual game to play, so sorting them in alphabetical order makes a lot of sense. One more important note here. Take a look inside one of these subfolders and you'll find that each of these ROMs has to be uncompressed. The Easy Flash Omega Definitive Edition cannot read your ROM content in zip or any other type of compressed file format. And before you start copying your games over to your micro SD card, grab a copy of my game Raven's Core for free. I have it linked for you in the video description and you can play it on your DS or DS Lite using the Easy Flash Omega Definitive Edition. Alright, now that you know the rules of the road for getting your game content to work with the Easy Flash Omega Definitive Edition, you can just simply grab everything that you want to copy over and drag and drop it anywhere that you want on the micro SD card. For example, you can put it right on the root or create a subfolder called Games, ROMs, or anything else that you like. 
All the heavy lifting's done. You can close out every instance of File Explorer on your desktop at this point. I want to point out something really cool about the Omega Definitive Edition. It uses what's called Ferroelectric Random Access Memory. What's really cool about it is it doesn't need a battery in order to save your game data. Take note that there is a battery inside the Omega Definitive Edition, but its sole purpose is to keep the real-time clock set. Remove the micro SD card from your computer and insert it into the Easy Flash Omega Definitive Edition. Just be careful when you put it into this side slot, it's very easy to miss the actual micro SD card slot and push it all the way inside the unit. Remove the blank from the Game Boy Advance slot on your DS or DS Lite. You do still have that blank, don't you? Then insert the Easy Flash Omega Definitive Edition as you would any Game Boy Advance cartridge. Power on your Nintendo DS or DS Lite. All of the action takes place in the top display, so that's what I've focused on here. From the main menu of your system, press the A button twice to launch the Game Boy Advance portion of your system. The Omega Definitive Edition will boot up just like any other Game Boy Advance cartridge would in your Nintendo DS or DS Lite system. From the main menu, you'll see that there are several tabs across the top of the screen. You can navigate these tabs by pressing right shoulder and left shoulder on your device. From here, you'll be able to make changes to things like the language, the real-time clock, activate rumble functionality and save state functionality, and make changes to how list and thumbnails are presented. Left shoulder takes you all the way back to the first tab and back to the main menu. There are a couple of things we need to check here. First, let's make sure that the thumbnails are working correctly inside Game Boy Advance. Use the D-pad to scroll down to the system you want and select it with A. From here, remember I set up these sub-menus in alphabetical order to make things easy to access. I have Iridian 2 saved inside the I folder, so I'll select it here with the A button. As you can see here, the thumbnail art is displayed in the bottom right corner. Take note that the only one of the systems that will have thumbnail art represented for it is the Game Boy Advance. Select the game of your choice with the A button and you'll see a pop-up window that gives you any pre-game launch options that are available to you. Press the A button again and your game will be loaded and ready to go. Next up, a quick note about NES emulation. Most of the games look really good and play great inside the emulator for the Easy Flash Omega Definitive Edition. However, there are some titles that can be a little bit glitchy, like Mike Tyson's Punch-Out shown here. You see, it uses emulation that's built right into the core functionality of the Easy Flash Omega Definitive Edition to run NES titles. It's not something that's natively built in the DS or DS Lite's operating system. Fortunately, most of the glitching is minor and doesn't get in the way of the overall gameplay experience. So the Easy Flash Omega Definitive Edition plays backups of Game Boy, Game Boy Color, Game Boy Advance, and NES. But did you notice that there's one glaring omission in this process here for playing games on your Nintendo DS or DS Lite? What about playing backups of your favorite DS games themselves? That video will be shown on screen and linked in the video's description and pinned comment. If you don't see it here yet, I've picked out a video right here that I think you'll enjoy.